One of the most special sessions because we've got the finalists for the tech startups. And I have the pleasure of introducing to you the person that's going to moderate the finalists. This lady has been with tech startups, well, actually 500 startups, for several years, many years. She's originally from Brazil. She started an accelerator in Brazil. And you know what you notice about people in the startup business? They're a lot of fun. Well, if there's anybody that's a lot of fun, it's Betty Yang. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Betty Yang, in charge of Latin America for 500 startups. Betty. First of all, uh, thank you for sitting into the last session, but very often when I come to conference, one of the most amazing things, it's actually to meet founders. So today we're gonna have uh, six founders and also like a panel of jury. And I hope to definitely like the founders would be able to pitch for three minutes and then you'll hear a little bit from the jury for the question and answers. And then towards the end, we'll announce the winner. Can I bring maybe the jury is up here right now. Thank you very much. Before I introduce the, the founders, I'd like the jury to, first of all, introduce themselves really quickly, who you are, which fund do you work with, and then like how many companies, what type of companies do you like? Hello, this is Dilek Dayanlarlı uh, from 212. I'm focused on uh, early stage investments in emerging markets. I'm Seth Artelli with Connect Ventures, uh, and we're focused on seed investments in companies across Europe. Hi, I'm uh, Simon Cook. I run Draper Esprit, uh, which is a fund investing all across Europe, um, helping the best European companies get over to the US. And we invest multi-stage. Thank you very much. Uh, pretty diverse from like stages and also region. So let's introduce first startup uh, that is going to pitch. Uh, it's called Biterja, and they do analytics and dashboard for companies. Please welcome the first team. No, no, it's up. Okay. Last minute change. So, so sorry. <laughs> okay, hello everybody, I think I have my three minutes now, so I'm going to present you Bitergia and what we do. The green button is this one, okay. Everybody wants to know about unicorns, I think you already know about this thing everybody is looking for and you are look already looking for them, so I'm going to present you some of them. Maybe you already know these people in, in the chart, but actually all of them together is like quarter trillion dollars on investment. So if you are wondering what they have in common, I'm going to say so, something quite important. All of them depend, use, provide, or under, underneath they are using open source technologies. Open technologies. I'm not going to bother you about what's open source, what's the business model behind that, or whatever. But I'm going to tell you one key point. Everything is about the community development these technologies. If you are wondering what a community is, actually it's a group of people working together, people from different companies, even people on their spare time doing quite cool technology. And this cool technology matters because this is where the business of these companies rely on. Actually, matters too much, but I, IT companies nowadays, most of them are not taking care even about the communities the, the, the business depend on. Actually, even they don't know who is behind the technology that I'm using. Maybe you, you are using, I don't know, Hadoop or technology like that, and you don't know how much code from Google is there, for example. So maybe you already know this kind of profile in companies nowadays, the community manager, thing like that, or developer advocate, people doing, maybe you are not clear idea about what he do, but actually, for example, Don Neri is working for a company that is participating in one of these communities. Actually, the company drives the community because the community produces a technology that is key for their business. Big data or whatever business you can imagine is key for them. And what are the responsibilities for Don? It's quite simple. To keep the community health, 
the community productivity and increase the visibility of the community. To do that is quite easy. She needs information, so to go to the data sources, but the data sources are too many and too different. So okay, she needs help. So she goes to the market. What's outside? Maybe you know already Black Duck, Open Hub. It's a solution, but it only covers one part of the ecosystem. Or maybe Gartner, but Gartner is only providing big picture. And maybe, maybe you can heard about Viterhia. Well, already she has already known about us because since we found the company, we have been worldwide explaining in the best world conference how we do metrics for these people. So she goes for our website, she checks the, the best option for her, and now she has the data. And she is a happy customer. But okay, this is a true story. Well, actually, these are several true stories for all of our customers. Customers that are quite happy, saying what, good things about us, and especially, they are helping us increasing our revenues by year, doubling our incomes since we have founded the company. So we are the next step going to provide this technology for decision makers. So if you are happy with that, we are welcome you to our next. So thank you very much and you are welcome. Oh, sorry, do you have any questions? <laughs> yes, uh, we have one minute uh, for a question. So maybe one question from one of the jury, and then if we have additional time, we'll work on that. Please, please. <laughs> I didn't quite hear all of it, but I got most of it. So uh, wh wh where are your customers based all over the world? Well, our customers, this is a funny story. We're a small company from a little town in Madrid, and all our customers are from the United States, all of them. Uh, and you're and you, you have no people over in the States. You're servicing them entirely from here. Our, our service is served from Spain, actually. We go there to the conference, we meet the people there, and then we set up an agreement and start selling them the data and the reports they need to take care about their communities and their products, actually. Do you just go after enterprise scale customers, or does it, do you go through small, medium, large enterprise? If you see the, the people that is in, in the chart from our company, from our customers, we go from, Foundations like the Linux Foundation or the OpenStack Foundation, the Wikimedia Foundation, the people behind Wikipedia. Yeah, but how much are, they're not paying you very much, right? So is it large companies paying you like $10 a month or what? No, it's like, for example, companies like Red Hat paying us something like $40,000 per year. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The next company is uh, Darwinex. We all know that uh, fintech and especially the financial service, it's being disrupted. And I'm very pleasure to introduce Darwinex, especially because they are also like selected one of the most disruptive uh, fintech companies in, in Europe. So very curious to know what you're working on. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us here today. So my name is Juan Colon. I'm CEO and co-founder with uh, Darwinex. And at uh, Darwinex, we empower traders. And the reason we do that is because the web powers online marketplaces where independent people can make a living. If you are a, a talented freelancer, you, you can make a living through Elance. If you have a talent for art, you can make a living through Etsy. But if you are, have a talent to grow money by, say, 20% a year, you need investor capital. The reason for that is uh, if you manage, say, 10 million of investor money, you grow that by 20%, you've created 2 million of profit, you keep the 20% success share, and woohoo, you've made $400,000 a year, which is a hedge fund uh, um, would, would be making. However, for that, for that, you need to be regulated, and there's a lot of hurdles for that. Uh, if you don't have that regulation, you're left on your own, and there's no marketplace that provides you with that capital. In that situation, if you grow money by the same 20% on your five peanuts of personal capital, you've made one peanut, which is not a sustainable business model. So just like Amazon empowered writers by making them uh, uh, e-books on your Kindle, we empower traders by making them an investable asset in your pocket. There's a global niche that you wouldn't suspect of, which is really helpful for you, because uh, about 5% uh, of any investment portfolio should be invested in assets without correlation and liquidity, and that's a lot of peanuts, one trillion globally, that are chasing very few assets and thus making bad returns. And that's the reason why we turn the best three to five million global tr traders worldwide, which is a three to five billion market globally, into a portfolio that you can invest in. 
It works through profit exchange. The traders are trading with a broker, competing to impre impress the investors, and the investors allocate capital to them. When they make a profit, they keep 80% of it, and they pay 20% to us, and we pay 15% to the trader, who thus becomes a hedge fund manager and overcomes this issue. Uh, we have a very differentiated proposition that uh, good traders really understand that sets us apart from our competition and more importantly we have gathered a lot of traction in the years since we opened our broker uh, we started from zero revenues and we're now currently processing two billion of nominal per month which equates to sixty thousand uh, dollars per per month in revenues on the brokerage side alone but more importantly our algorithms can tell the good traders in our community and if you had invested in the best traders in our community over the last year you would have made a return of about 45 percent on less risk than any of those indices who returned some negative money so there's real bucks to be made here and that's our best way to acquire customers because we know we can profitably invest in our own customers we deploy our own capital we're currently offering two million of seed capital to our own customers which attracts good traders which attracts more investors and then we get the marketplace dynamics going and reach the hockey stick um, the Darwin X team is led by the three founders. We have collectively 30 years worth of experience in financial markets. We're backed by a board, including guys with Goldman Sachs and uh, Elance. And we're now raising our Series A to accelerate our growth in Europe and Asia and to the US, deploy even more cooler technology to analyze the big data, and generally build a, a kick-ass operation. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Um, how do you acquire your traders and your customers? Right. So, uh, very good question. So, the, the traders we target are really good traders who, are, who know that they need a viable business model to make a living. They need the investor capital. Because we can tell who's good uh, and who's just lucky, we basically deploy, we, we've started off by deploying our own capital, which attracts the good traders, which then allows us to attract the investors, and then we kind of, we prime the engine. How much capital? Uh, manage uh, through your platform? So we, we have started that just that we've been on closed beta, so we've only allowed 300 investors up to now. There's about 300,000 euros of, of, um, of assets, but we've now invested 2 million of our own capital to prove that we can invest it without not making a loss. And if we don't make a loss at doing that, essentially we, we just, it's a question of deploying 10 times that capital, 20 times that capital, and that attracts more and more traders. Oh, maybe one more question. What, what are the asset classes that you're right focusing on? So we, we target the most liquid asset classes globally because that way it's a scalable business model. Right now you can trade commodities, stock indices, and foreign exchange. However, the methodology allows us to, to offer any futures at, offered anywhere uh, worldwide. And that's the next thing we're doing. So it's piping more and more liquid assets into the platform. Thank you, Thank you so much. Very much. Thanks. Startup, it's from Bulgaria and it's Imaga. And Imaga does uh, image recognition and then use machine learning to sort of learn throughout through the API. CEO of Imaga. Okay, hello everybody. I'm Georgi, co founder and CEO of Imaga. Imaga is a cloud API that enables businesses and developers to develop apps that understand images. So, we suggest a set of keywords that describe the key objects and concepts of uh, interest represented visually inside the image. So let's start first with the problem. In the last three years, only in the last three years has been taken more photos than in the whole previous history of photography. And on a daily basis, we have like two billion photos shared, and most of them are just forgotten in about 30 minutes because photos don't have metadata associated with them, and thus the photos are not searchable, barely useful, and even uh, less than that monetizable. So the problem that we tackle is to how to make these photos findable, understandable, and you can derive value out of that. The solution that we have is an automated tagging API, and it replaces the need of manual annotation of photos, which is either very time or resource consuming, uh, and we make this process automatic, so the images after that could be searchable, or you can extract some kind of trends out of them. So here's just one example how we suggest tags for this particular image, like dragonfly, insect, plant. In addition to the suggestion of the tags, we have something that we call auto-categorization, and it automatically assigns photos to categories. So let's say personal photos, like uh, portrait photos, natural photos, beach photos, event and party photos, and so on. The technology behind is based on beyond state-of-the-art deep neural network learning. 
and we have a large set of categories, and we can suggest 30 to 40 keywords for each given image with high relevance. Among many different, I, I would say, exciting use cases, some of the most prominent are uh, application and cloud services or value-added services where we enable the people to search photos based on our tagging technology, but also in advertising, in digital asset management, and in contextual advertising and user profiling. The business model is either cloud-based self-service API or enterprise. Uh, that's on-premise, and I can say since we started in the beginning of this year, we already have pretty solid traffic organically from the Europas, from U Europa, uh, America, Latin America, and Asia. And we have several very big enterprise customers in advertising and in cloud services, with total projected revenue for that year of 300,000 US dollars. We're just opening for Series A because we want to expand with physical presence in the US, and also expand the growth of the company so we can eventually achieve our vision to be um, in image recognition as a service what Amazon is for web services. Last but not least, our team can uh, consist of uh, eight highly motivated people with expertise in software development, image recognition, content marketing, and usability. So if you're interested in our solution, I'll be happy to chat right after in the, at the parties or tomorrow. Thank you. Hi. Um, who is your customers? Who are, in particular, or in verticals? <laughs> like, uh, do you have a focused customer segment? Yeah. Who are using? You said adverti advertisement agencies, right? Yeah. So in agencies? case of the advertising agency, we have one of the biggest on the West Coast, which is serving the biggest US retailer, but I cannot disclose. Uh, in Asia, we have uh, Seedpost, which is uh, handling advertising campaigns for Kia, the motor cars. Uh, we also have one of the biggest uh, telecoms in terms of profits in Europe as a cloud service provider for, for their end customers. How did you acquire them? How did they come it's to you? <laughs> up so far, it's always been inbound. So they found us. We are one of the very few solutions, and we rank at the top two or three positions when you type image recognition API, image tagging API, and so on. So they escalated from just inbound traffic to enterprise customers. Okay. Hello again. Made some good progress. I've, we met before. Uh, you do about 3,000 objects right now, right? But what's the number of objects you need to be able to do it completely automated? Because I believe right now you still do some manual tagging, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so we currently have 3,000 as the core part of the recognition. Maybe a target would be about five to have like to increase from 85 to 95 term uh, precision. But we also have some additional keywords. So we directly recognize this is a bottle and this is a table, but then we can say bar, nightclub, and something like that, which is not part of these 3,000. They're like additional semantic-related keywords. Thank you very much. Uh, next company is uh, MediaSmart, a company from Spain. And we all know that we like who has actually have a mobile phone? No one has a mobile phone. <laughs> no one's actually paying attention. <laughs> but uh, uh, MediaSmart actually work with optimization advertising on, on mobile. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, MediaSmart is a mobile advertising technology company that helps advertisers reach mobile audiences effectively. Now, um, the advertising ecosystem can be a bit confusing, so let me just start by clarifying where we play. Uh, publishers that have advertising inventory work with um, ad tech providers to uh, help maximize their yield and make their inventory available in marketplaces. We, we're not one of those providers. On the contrary, we work with um, agencies and advertisers to enable them through our technology to buy advertising in those marketplaces and to do so in real time in a data-driven fashion and always maximizing engagement with their campaigns. The opportunity is unquestionable. While more than 60% of digital media engagement happens on mobile devices, only 15% of digital advertising budgets go to mobile. And that gap needs to be closed, and we know how it's going to be closed. It's through programmatic advertising. Um, the real-time data-driven type of media buying that um, MediaSmart enables is quickly becoming the de facto way of buying media. And in, in 2016, actually, more than 62% of advertising is expected to be traded that way. Now, why is that gap there between audience and investment then? 
uh, well, simply because mobile uh, technology is different from the technology that is required in desktop. And when we started in uh, January 2012, virtually no one was applying programmatic methods to mobile. We were one of the first ones to do so, and we've used that first mover uh, advantage quite well. We've uh, created our own uh, platform, proprietary platform, which is uh, extensively proven in the marketplace and is today driving a business where more than 63% of the revenue comes from a software as a service model. That means advertisers and agencies using the platform directly. We've also established uh, partnerships with more than 25 global players in the ecosystem, uh, bringing to our clients unparalleled global reach. And with all of the campaigns we've run throughout this three years and a half, we've gathered a database of more than 200 million profile users, which our clients can use for audience targeting, but which is also an invaluable input to all of our algorithms to really make the smartest decision uh, at the point of uh, doing the media buying. Um, we have proven uh, we can scale, especially since we uh, launched the software as a service model in January 2014. And we expect to grow 200% uh, this year, with most of that growth coming from international markets. Uh, we have achieved all this thanks to an amazing team of 15 people today who are absolutely dedicated to the cause and who know a lot about advertising and mobile. And we've done so also with relatively modest investment of 2 million euro to date. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, have you got any, who is your closest, it's a very crowded space, so who are your closest competitors? I know, it's a crowded space. <laughs> so I guess the closest would be the, the mobile first DSPs, right? We, we don't consider the desktop first DSPs competitors, but I would say it's a very crowded space also because a lot of people uh, that call themselves DSP because they buy programmatically don't have their own technology. One of the we were one of the first ones to, uh, uh, to have started and we have our own technology and often other companies uh, build DSPs using building blocks such as ours. Thank you very much. Oh, that's all. Thank you. The next startup uh, is called Native Ad, and it's an ad server for native advertising, particularly for Spanish speaking uh, communities. Hello everyone, my name is Gorka Muñecas. I am the dreamer, founder, and CEO of Nerivat. And let me ask you a question. Raise your hand who, during the last week, click on purpose on a banner ad. I suppose it. Almost just a few of you. Experts say that it's more likely to be attacked by a shark than a click in a banner ad. That's why. People don't like interruptions, they like content. And that, that's why we create Nerivat. Let me show you what we do. You can see here, this is a typical online newspaper. There are articles in there, but this article here is introduced through our native advertising ad server. You can see that it has the same look and feel that the other contents around it. If you like it, you click on it, and you can consume that all the content, this is branded content. This is content is created by Adidas in this case. And the great thing is that if Adidas can distribute this branded content in 1,000 publishers at the same time, just with, with one click, and it will appear in each publisher with the look and feel of, of those publishers. Nerivat joined forces with publishers to monetize their entire audience, not only on desktop, but it in, in social networks and in mobile. Display advertising no longer works. Display advertising is broken. And that's why uh, native advertising expensing is growing very fast. Experts expect that in the next two years, it will get up to 9 billion just in the US market. And we also are growing very fast. 
Right now, we are leaders in Latin America, in Spain, and in the in US Hispanic. And some of the largest ad networks uh, in those re regions are working with our server as a service for native ad ad advertising. All of this is thanks to a uh, badass team that they are in, in Mexico City, in Miami, in New York, and in Madrid. And most of them are developers. Right now, we are looking for two millions for a start selling in Brazil, in Europe, and in the Middle East. So welcome to the post banner era. Welcome to programmatic native advertising era. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. So but what is it exactly that you guys do? Do you write the ads, or are you no, just the? No, we are just technology. We are a platform. We, uh, we sell our clients, our customers, are ad networks. They have their clients are agencies, and they affiliate publishers. They, they work through our technology. So it's a software as a service. And our revenue, uh, we have a revenue share model. Uh, from 15 to 20% of their sales, are for us, just for us, just technology. That's why we can scale very fast. Because if we want to go, for example, to Indonesia, we don't need to know which are the agencies in, the, in Indonesia or the, the publishers. We give that technology to the ad networks in Indonesia. That's why now we can scale very, very fast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, the company is uh, Work Today. And Work Today is a mobile app that helps connect temporary worker with different type of businesses. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Alvaro Curiel, co-founder of Work Today. I want you to remember the last day that you were facing a very important day in your company, and someone called you saying something like, sorry, sorry, boss, <coughs> I can't go to work today. And you say, don't worry, boy, get well soon. When you really want to say, is, I'm going to kill you, motherfucker. Because you know that day you are going to lose a lot of money, and probably you are going to lose some clients. This is your face that day. According to company's opinion, absenteeism is the largest barrier to be more productive. All in Spain, it represents an opportunity cost of 55 billion euro every year because of services or goods not provided. It's a huge problem worldwide. Being more affected, the companies in the service sector dedicated to cleaning services, hospitality and catering, uh, retail, transport, logistics, etc. We work today, you can post a time your buffer in seconds, sending the alert only to the part-time workers, students, unemployed, that perfectly fit the requirements about experience and geolocation for an immediate incorporation. The company see the candidates that have said yes to his offer ranked according to distance, experience, and other managers' valuations, because it is a must to rate each other after his service. We launched our app uh, six months ago. We are over 22,000 candidates, more than 800 companies publishing job offers. We have a monthly average increase of over 40% for both actors. Our business model is paper use. We get a five euro commission fee every time a company selects a worker. Talking about only the 50% of the work days produced by absenteeism, we face a market of over four billion euro for, this year, for these areas. We have competition, of course, but we are the only company that provides a just-in-time solution to the problem. It fits so well our users and client needs that they don't stop to recommend us. Our biggest asset are our candidates, but we have a great team too with more than 30 years of experience in business intelligence, marketing, sales, recruitment, finance, internationalization, and management. We have great CAS and no CAS supporters, and like them, we want you to trust in us to become the number one and help millions of people and millions of companies to be more productive and earn more money. Because you know that millions of people take a taxi every day. Millions of people 
travels every day, but you will agree with me that many more millions of people work every day. So corporates, investors, everybody, you join us? Thank you. Uh, what is the use cases that you have now? Like now we are a few people, we are very focused on hospitality and catering and retail shops. Uh, people for congresses, um, promoters, uh, waiters, uh, bartenders, cookers, something like that. Did you say? Sorry? So as a very local uh, marketplace business, you really need to get critical mass in a very local area quickly. Sorry, so. understand? Sorry, um, it's a very local business. You need people locally quickly. Yeah. So you need a lot quickly. of people in a local area quickly. So how, yeah, a lot of people, yeah. Maybe we, we think about 30, 40 people around each business unit. It's OK. Uh, but business units used to be very close, one to the others. Have a very Companies all together, restaurants all together, hotels all together. It's okay. so we need people, but we need good people. Is the people that we have in our app? Do you need the people before the jobs, or the, which comes first, the jobs or the people? Uh, at the same time, okay. we we think we are a marketplace. We need to show offers to people, and candidates come along. We need to invest money in getting companies, getting customers. And we are investing in getting candidates, but like every marketplace, you have to be, you need a good offer to get good uses. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. First of all, congratulations on the six teams uh, who were finalists and pitched on today's session. And most importantly, also thank you very much for the jury today. Thank you.